All right, and we are live. Thanks, Bill. Uh, so welcome, guys, to another episode of Codex Hammer. We are live on Facebook. Um, I'll probably send a... Why don't I have this up? I will probably send a, a little thing up saying, hey, we're live. So that okay. shows on Facebook. That's interesting. Oh, that's right. Because it needs to be. It's this one. So I'm going to snag that. Let's see what's. Okay. So that's what we want. And then that's a different one. Anyway, um, so how you doing, Bill? Thanks. Good. For, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, I have spent way too much money on eBay <laughs> grabbing nicks and knacks for different things uh, that's been the same thing I've been doing the past week as well <laughs> is eBay and everything to death yeah just scouring for like good deals on something on like devil fishes mainly or other random stuff oh did you see the the guy who uh who played in the? I think was it the Atlanta City Atlantic City Open, and took second or third with Tao. I think I, I think he got third or fourth with Tao. It, it was, was uh, Richard Siegler. Yeah, Siegler is, is his name. And yeah, he brought he's... like all sorts of crazy stuff. Like, d didn't he bring um, was it either Devilfish or Piranhas? I don't remember which. Um, he brought Devilfish. That's the transport option for him. Uh huh. Um. So that he brought those, and then a bunch of breachers, which are like the shotgun guys, and then uh, the guardian drone, which gives them like a, uh, a I think it's a five up invul, uh -huh. if they're around them. So he had really good objective control that way, and it it makes sense since like our only real like objective ob objective holders are like the fire warriors and breachers. Uh huh. So hopefully the that will. And the devilfish will protect them a little bit until they can actually get there. Yeah, and they did like I remember because I watched the interview for um, Frontline Game. It's front the Frontline Gaming Network. So they did a yeah. It's, it's the only show I can stand watching is the Forty K Stat Center. Like I literally so I subscribed to him because I've been watching you and I watch the Honest War Gamer, and yeah, and I I've been watching Falcon and Val for a couple of weeks now, maybe like three or four weeks. And I'm like, these guys are very entertaining, interesting individuals. And when they said they had that sh episode on that show, I'm like, all right, like I'm gonna go watch it. So then I watched it. I'm like, yeah, like that's it. that's for 40k. I'm all about that, right? I I'll mm -hmm. definitely watch this to get my get my 40k update. Um, but then I tried to like watch their other shows. There's like a Grim After Dark. There's the Thursday show. And something, anyway, something else. And I try to watch each of them, and I probably only got like 10, 15 minutes in, and I'm like, nope, can't, nope. Like, <laughs> and and yeah. even like the Grim After Dark was talking, like, they talked to Age of Sigmar as well, 3.0, and I'm just like, I don't know, just not my cup of tea, I guess. Yeah, I haven't seen any of those shows. I've only just seen, it's the same people that are on, uh, Honest War Gamer, right? Yeah, the uh, 40k. Okay, those two or three so, guys. Yeah, the 40K yeah, those adjacent. guys. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen any of the other, any of the other stuff. I haven't bothered to look into it. I don't care that much about 40k. <laughs> it's not. It's not worth your time. <laughs> yeah, so. I, have more, I have other pressing issues. Oh yeah, well, yeah. Waiting for third, <laughs> getting to know. Yeah, I'm. I'm kind of worried with all this stuff. Like, I'm assimilating third edition. And you and I are still in that league, and like, um, I'm worried that by like continually looking at third edition Age of Sigmar, like I'm gonna have an issue tomorrow when I play Kyler. Like I'm gonna be yeah. like, no, you could do this, no, you can do that, or you know what I'm saying, or just I'm thinking in thir th third edition terms instead of you know, second I, edition. But. I guess I can see if you can be like that. I'm still in like 2.0 mindset even at this point yeah um like I, I haven't looked much in the list building uh just besides some other random wacky ideas i've had but i haven't like so sat down and wrote a 3.0 list or anything yet oh right on i'm still 
even though we have the points now, which is the big one that I was kind of waiting on, um, we're still not sure on any FAQ, FA, FAQ changes that we're going to have with, with some codex, well, uh, battle tomes and everything. Tomes. And a lot of people, like I mean, a lot of different channels are saying there, you know, there's kind of got to be, I mean, if nothing else, um, rules changes for all the endless spells have got to mm -hmm. change. Um, as, you know, At least say. with some of them, for sure. That, which is kind of weird that, I, mean, I guess they want it to be faction specific, so that way you don't have to get a GHB, I guess, to get your updated um, endless spell rules. So I, I think that's what they'll probably end up doing, is update on the battle tomes themselves that contain them. Yeah. Because it's, uh, what, Malign Portent that had all the generic endless spells? Yes. Yeah, so, I, okay, then they'll, they'll just make this the um, list for all those, then, is my guess. There's not all of them, either. It's not all the endless spells. No, right? but, I, but that's what I'm saying. It's Well, it's all the endless spells from the, like, the, the Malign Portents. Whatever. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at, yeah, it is all the ones. Okay. So that's what I can imagine them doing, because like, um, especially some of them like doubling or like even more in points, they're not, they're not that good. Oh yeah. Like, like some of the Nighthaunt ones. One of them is, um, I think the Vault of Souls. It's like eighty points, and it's still just garbage. Like you don't ever use it. Even, even now, it can't get sent back to you. But it's like some of them do need to have a rewrite. Well, and, and like the, I know a lot of people are saying, especially if the Honest War game, Rob's saying um, the Soul Snare Shackles and the Gem Geminids were already good and they're still kind of good, but the Soul Snare, Snare Shackles is going to be stonks. And, mm -hmm. and, but uh, yeah, no, super excited. Um, so just to go back, so yeah, like I said, I probably spent, I spent a lot of money. I've spent a lot of a lot, way too many, too much money on eBay items. So, but I have, I, I think I have everything I could pretty much possibly need, other than a, like an a, another three man unit of Pegasus Knights for my. Flames. Oh, you've been for getting all the old Bretonia stuff. Yeah, it's so expensive. And it I is feel like so if you, expensive. I don't think it's a good idea to go off eBay. I think if you go off like. Uh, Facebook groups usually. I think you can find good deals, but some of them, most of them I feel like are overseas though for older kits. Yeah, well, and, and just like yeah. in, for bulk in general, the vast majority of it was from the UK, which I weeded out. But there was a couple of guys in like eastern the eastern United States that had some stuff. Well, and I'm only buying like individual models, but still, it's like so I'm I'm spending like forty bucks a model for a, oh. for a specific. <laughs> For a specific, <laughs> and it's like ow, ow, ow. But, but like I said, I have everything I need. I think now, I even have stuff for uh, their endless spells. So I'm gonna do some custom uh, endless spells. Mm -hmm. And I even found this uh, terrain piece on um, on eBay, it's a Bretonian Bretonia themed terrain piece. So someone three D printed like a um, like these like rubble ruins, and they took uh -huh. they took one of the the damsels on foot and put her up on a pedestal, so it looks like a shrine to the Lady of the Lake. That's uh, sweet. And they they, they <laughs> painted it up all marble and everything like that. So that'll be my uh, the throne, my carnal throne. Charnel throne. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, super excited. But mm -hmm. then it's the long haul of painting nights, which is... <laughs> I think that's going to be painful, but it'll be fun. So mm -hmm. what have you been hobbying? What are you, what are you, what's been on your... I know you're, you said you're priming today, or base painting. Yeah, I'm... I've been wanting to repaint my towel for a while. Um, this is right a, now it's like a, a army-wide overhaul? Yes, this is like the first thing I've ever painted, so I want to, I, I, I don't know why, but I chose to do like just straight white for highlights on a lot of stuff, and it's like, you, you can never get it great because it's always super chalky, uh -huh. and you always see the lines in it, so I, that's always bugs me, 
um, right now it's kind of like a, a uh, like a, a muted a muted blue, and I'm probably gonna go for maybe like a it's like that like a pastel I it was like that purple blue. Yeah, it's I I think it's called Wolf Gray okay. from like the Army Painter line yeah. specifically. So that's what I've and been you're... doing today at least for a bit. So you're going from basically powder blue to uh, what kind of purple? Mm -hmm. Um like a pastel, I guess is a good way to put it. Like an More, Easter um... Easter purple. Not yeah, I, it's more like um, I'm trying to think of the best way. Like I have it here. It's a Vallejo's blue violet. Is what I'm probably gonna base coat everything in. Oh, okay. I just grabbed a bunch of fire warriors and then just sprayed them down, see what I like, and now I'm just kind of mixing stuff and seeing what I like on them. Well, this is with your airbrush, right? Yeah, it's airbrush. And then I, I think last week I finished a few Huracan wind chargers. So I'm not I'm excited to see those guys on the table. They they are literally <laughs> broken. Like I, I listened to someone talk about taking those. He took like three units, and he played, which I think will be good for you because he played. I remember he was telling talking about how he played, um, the Sons of Behemoth, and they just yeah. they just never got into close combat. And it's like you have these big pointed things that never did anything all game long. I just chased Lumineth kangaroos all, all over the table. Yeah. Um, the real trick is to run um, Severeth or a Wind Spirit, because uh, an ability on their War Scrolls what lets them not pile in three. It minuses two on their pile in, to a minimum of one. Uh -huh. And that's like what really kills most armies, because then you have to have reach two to even be able to touch them. Yeah. Because you can pile out, you go two point nine, uh, they move their one inch in, and then they can only hit you with a range two weapon. Then you can pile or, out. Yeah, you can move away. You don't. You don't have to follow the rule of pile in to the nearest. Um, you just get a pile in model. Not necessarily a pile in to the nearest model. Yeah, you can even pile out of combat. Like, if you charge and then... Um, if I charge, you if, somehow if, get into close combat, w let's say with two different units against two mm -hmm. different kangaroo units, I would fight one kangaroo unit, then you could literally pile out of close, close combat with your other kangaroo unit. Yeah, well, I mean, with them, I get to choose two at a time to fight because of lightning fast reactions oh for Lumina. Yeah, so you would just... So you, so yeah, you, you pretty much won't be able to choose to an, an attack. You can even probably lock. Well, no, because you go to the closest, you're not locked. You get to choose. Um, but it's it, it's pretty much if you don't have range two on a weapon, then you can't do anything. My. And even then, you probably won't be able to charge a wind spear to begin with. Yeah, the wind spear. As soon as you get close, or just move twelve away. Move, yeah, in, in my <laughs> shooting phase. So I move, then you move, and then there's no ch chance to charge ever. Didn't, yes. didn't so Severeth I, go up points? Oh, the named spirit went up like, it was, I think, 300 points before. Isn't he like And I think now it's like 380 or maybe oh even higher. <laughs> so like, but granted, he is a hero. He's not a monster. Um, but... Being a hero, so he can heal D3 in the hero phase. Uh huh. But if he's near a Huracan Wind Mage, he can heal an additional D3 in the hero phase. Oh my gosh. And he has like a five up uh, ward save and like just like all this tacked on for free that just like. He just does so much. Oh yeah. But with everything going up in the army, is he still worth it? Maybe in like a. Just a, a straight Huracan army for sure, but. I don't know. It was like a an included in, in like the the Venari range or not? They're still. I mean, yeah. And that is one thing. That, like I said, we'll, we'll, and we'll definitely want to chat about like winners and losers. But um, yeah, your whole army went up quite a bit, right? Um, depending on the list, up like ten to like I think even up to thirty points if you ran. More heavy in wardens. Yeah. 
Um, Cause I mean, for some reason those are, those went up 15 points more than Sentinels did and Sentinels are kind of the crazy ones. The crazy broken ones. Yeah, Stalkers yeah. went up 30 points. 30 points, Stalkers. and that's 30 points for five. Is that the, um, remind me what those are. The st blood, the blood stalkers, the snake ladies, daughters of Cain. Oh, okay. They went up 30, so that's essentially like, Oof. yeah. They went up t two times what you you guys went up, and for half yeah. as many models. So, but, essentially like 200%. But that codex was already like under-costed by a lot. Mm. Like... Marathi being like six hundred was a steal at six sixty. She's still a yeah, steal. Yeah, she's still she's still at a price and still a, a crazy good mm -hmm. deal. Yeah, like they they on the whole they still won. It's just those bloodstalkers, and you could I guess you could only take fifteen now ever, but mm -hmm. which I think that's and I don't unless you really wanted to maximize that command ability. I don't think anyone really took more than fifteens anyway. I think it was maybe like. A few tens anyway to hopefully not get blown out if they killed your twenty man. Well, well, tech, well, like so. The last two lists that did really well in tournaments, they one of them took two tens and the other took a, a unit of twenty. But typically, you take a big twenty man unit so that way it's you're you're only having to use that command ability on one unit so that you get the basically eighty shots a turn. Yeah, you get the most value out of it out of the twenty man, but. Mm -hmm. Which it seems like that's what they're trying to do with making squads mostly smaller. Is now, they're trying you... to limit how much value you can get and stuff. Yeah, well, and that, like that's army wide. I mean, I mean, addition wide, right? Like, there's a bunch yeah. of armies: Daughters of Cain, Fire Slayers. Um... Some of the Skaven units, like uh, Storm Bruman, are at ten now instead of up to up to forty. Which they weren't like a heavy hitter, but um, I know some people ran them as it, no, ran those it, instead of clan rats to yeah. punch in at least with something a little harder. Well, and now you've got to you got to pay the extra. You got to use one of your reinforcements to get them up to those little twenty mans because you know you just bring mm -hmm. three units of twenty man just for your battle line. Yeah. So I mean, I, I guess in a way, it's now I'm going to bring ten. Because they still don't do very much, but yeah, some of the like some books will be hurt a lot. Like I know Skaven for sure, in general, unless they they do some changes, um, they will still benefit from having um, larger units with their bravery buff. Because um, because they got rid of that on in the core rules as well. For every ten, you get an additional bravery, which I would always forget anyway. Yeah. Um, but Skaven gets plus two for every ten, so they can still get a big bravery buff with that, but you're by a character that gives you immune anyway, so I don't think it'll matter that much. Nice. At least for them. Um, I also, did you see the do, I watched a, a battle report from, um, what's his name? Gorilla, Gorilla Miniatures? Gorilla Gaming? Gorilla Miniatures Gaming? You know yeah, I've about. seen. Yeah, they 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 he's been doing a few more. So he did another one with like, for ogre maw tribes and Illuminati. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that hurts so that bad one. to watch. It hurts <laughs> so bad to watch. Well, and like mm -hmm. I get it, he's still learning too, and you know I'm mm -hmm. sure when when we start playing, we'll forget. But I just I'm watching the whole time, thinking, dude, you forgot to do this. Like, hey. You can dispel on his turn, right? So, mm -hmm. like, he just kept eating that stupid Lumineth spell. Endless spell. Searing right? white light? Yeah. He just kept eating it, like, turn after turn. And on, because it goes off on both in, at the end of each movement phase, right? Oh, uh, you mean the um, endless spell? Yeah. I, I think it's. I, I was painting while I was watching it. I think it's Rune of Petrification is the one that goes off on each. On each movement phase. Yeah, and on a four, um, on a four up, you do D three mortal wounds. Yeah, and I think it limits their movement a little bit too. Yeah, it's a minus one to move to run and charge rolls. 
if you're okay. within so so close. But I'm just saying, like, so he, he like the, he cast it, and I, I'm assuming he didn't dispel it or couldn't dispel it. So then he mm-hmm. ate it in the Lumineth Realm Lord's movement phase, and then he didn't dispel it on hit like on his turn, and then he didn't dispel, <laughs> dispel it on the the, the Lumineth next. I'm just like, dude, yeah. you are just taking copious amounts of mortal wounds like you gotta get it for no reason for yeah. no reason i mean i guess you only get one shot right but per turn but like i said you you could do that in there that's one of the coolest things i like about this new well just about endless spells is you you can dispel it in your opponent's turn now so it's yeah if you choose the wizard as the hero thing yeah what to dispel or cast i think even I think it's just a spell. I can't remember. I don't even know if it's. Um, I don't even know if you have to choose that because I thought in the new in the rules. I thought it's in the rules now when they because they talk about. Sorry, I'm just pulling it up. Because they talk about how the hero phase works and then casting. Mm-hmm. Because um. I'm pretty sure um, the heroic action uh, goal. I mean, there is someone that is a wizard in ogres. I can't remember. Yeah. Well, he had two. He had the the butcher and uh, the fire. Oh, butcher's a wizard. Okay. So I mean, yeah. I think you have to dispel at the beginning of the hero phase. Um, or you can do it at any time if you're doing it with a wizard. Uh, there's some abilities that has to be done at the beginning. You know that. Uh, like, I think Techless his has to be done at the beginning. If I remember correctly. Um, okay. I know there's... So her, that's the, you're talking about the heroic action. Heroic willpower. Pick yeah. A friendly hero that is, but that's pick a friendly hero that is not a that's wizard. not a wizard. If, the enemy hero, if, if it is an enemy hero... In the enemy hero phase, that hero can attempt to unbind one spell. In that phase, as if they were a wizard, but I'm saying in the when it when it comes to um, see, you got to go down to like the spell casting section because I, yeah. I I if I remember correctly, that it is. Bum, bum, bum. Takes so long to pull up because of all the pictures. I feel like I can order it, uh, get open faster on my phone than I can on my computer too. It does, really? All right. So wizards yeah. and casting spells. <laughs> it says in in your hero phase you can a- attempt to cast spells with a friendly wizard. You cannot attempt to cast spells uh, more than once in the same hero phase. Blah 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 blah. blah. Unbinding spells. So. It, if a spell is successfully cast, your opponent can pick one wizard who is within. Which we know. But I thought it was a unit of wizards. Oh, here it is. A unit of. Maybe this is it. A unit of wizards. A unit with the wizard keyword in its worst goal is a wizard. You can use a friendly wizard to cast spells that they know in your hero phase and to unbind spells. In the enemy hero phase. So they're just talking about the number of spells you can attempt to cast or unbind with a wizard is noted. All wizards know the arcane in addition to wizard notes. Okay. So you're, are, are they, so they're specifying that you unbind the wizard. You're trying to unbind the wizard, the spell that the wizard just cast. Okay. Is that what it's saying then? Um, Maybe I just read it way too fast when I was originally reading it. My phone's loading right now, and I can look at it real quick. What page is it on? Uh, it's twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay. Well, see, okay, so here it is. It's on 23, and this is I think this is where I was reading it and got confused. And the spell. So on page 23, it's 19.3.2. 19. 
dispelling endless spells. At the start of the hero phase, each player can can each player can attempt to dispel one endless spell for each friendly wizard and friendly priest. The player whose turn is taking place makes all of their dispelling attempts first. If a wizard attempts to dispel an endless spell, they cannot attempt to cast or unbind. They they can attempt to cast or unbind one fewer spells, one fewer spell in that hero phase. If a priest attempts, blah blah blah, one less invoke prayer uh, in the hero in that hero phase. So, like I said, it, my understanding of this is at the start of the hero phase. So either f- hero phase, each player can attempt to dispel one endless spell with each friendly wizard. Yeah, that's right. You can at both players' turn. You can attempt. So I can Which try I, to dispel, I, like, if you're casting spells and I don't care, you know what I'm saying, or, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, you ha- you've you cast an end of spell on your turn, well, like I said, or, yeah, like I said, it's say it's your turn again, and that's, and that's what I was saying, like, so he, he cast the spell, and let's use that battle report, right? So he cast mm-hmm. the spell, Teclas cast the spell, it took effect, because he couldn't unbind it, it took yeah. effect. And then he forgot to unbind it on his turn. Fine. The endless spell, yeah. Yeah, fine. On your turn, and it says at the start of the hero phase, right? Mm-hmm. Each player can attempt to dispel an endless spell. So it's like, I'm going to dispel on your turn your endless spell. And if I do, you can't recast that spell. Because it says an endless spell. Uh, I think I don't remember where it is. Um, if I remember, a endless spell can't be dispelled and then set up in the same turn. In the same turn, exactly. Yeah. So, I, so if, like I said, so if I wait do, until like, your turn and dispel mm-hmm. your endless spell, you couldn't cast it again. Yeah, then yeah, that'd work. Just as you're saying as it would. But it is, you are allowed to try, and it's only one, one endless spell is only allowed to be attempted to be dispelled once a turn. So you couldn't use mm-hmm. multiple here are wizards to un- to to dispel it, mm-hmm. which that's how it is now. You can only attempt to un- unbind one. Yeah. Well, it no spell one. Each same spell with, once. Yeah. And the yeah. Spell. So and same with normal cast as well. So that's nothing changed there. It's just that being able to to do it on dispel an endless spell on on your opponent's turn. I think it's huge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that'll stop some combos. Like with I know. Um, Mirrors is the same, pretty much. I think it's just a smaller range that you can go out far, farther. Uh-huh. But it makes sense because the board's getting smaller anyway. Yes. Um, but then that means you can unbite it during their turn, and then they can't cast anything through it. And now you're safe. Because then they can't, yeah. For, for a turn, at least. Yeah, because then they can't attempt to recast Anyway, yeah, like I said, it just just wa- just watching the battle report, I'm just like, and the and you know, it was a lot of things, and and he's you know, it's not like he's, uh, he's he's just there to make content right and have fun, which is great. I that's what <laughs> I'm, I'm all about too. But I just watched like his deployment, and like it's like, hey, let's bunch all my, you know, you know what he has, you know he has that endless spell. Why in yeah, the world? Yeah, and <laughs> and techless, which means automatic, no way to stop. Why would you bunch all your guys up? Like he had like his whole army except for the shooting guys, the lead belchers, mm-hmm. all together. And I'm like, oh, that's just painful. Mm-hmm. But, well, I think he's got the mindset of ABC, always be charging. Which which is so just f- right on the line. Fine, get in there. <laughs> Which is fine, but it's like you gotta. I mean, spread them out because it's only the range for that spell is only what six inches. Every unit within yeah. six inches or something like that. Yeah, everything within six. So or it's six. like you should Pick only be having then... two units getting hurt by that thing. Period. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even if yeah, even if you're on the line, which you should be, right? Because you are ogres are ABC. It's all about charging. Uh, always be charging, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, you shouldn't be eating, and and you know you shouldn't be. He shouldn't be rolling five or six dice to see whether or not you're taking mortal wounds on five or six different you know, units. Mm-hmm. Anyway, P 
P.S. Uh, this is a public apology. I was chatting with Dowin last night. He came over and dropped off terrain. Um, and I, I told him I told him what I did to you and how I robbed you of a game. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and he's like, what? And I'm like, I feel so bad. Anyway, so this is my formal apology. I apologize for even giving your opponent the idea of how to beat you because he at no time throughout the whole game that I watched had any intention of moving those more tech guards off of that objective. Yeah, I don't I don't think he had any. I, I, I also, he is new too, so I think he thought you had to stay on a point to capture a point. Oh, um, really? So I, like, I, I told him, like, you can move those off and you still control it. And then he started eyeballing because I, I think he didn't know that part of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense too. Because uh, I think he plays more 40k too. And, you know, yeah, he does. 40k, you got to hold the objective with the unit, so... Yeah, you actually have to be there, which is good and bad. It means you can't can't just like capture everything in your back line and then just push everything forward in the center. Yes, which can really cut. I mean, in think about that in forty k, like some armies would be screwed if that was the case. Like if I if I as as you know dark or like my uh, harlequins, if mm-hmm. I'm on my objectives, then it's like okay, these are mine. You have to come back here and get them if you want them. But I'm gonna be up in your, you know face turn one Mm -hmm. it's like that just makes life hard unless you've got deep strike Mm -hmm. so so i get like i said i get why 40k it is the way it is but anyway so again uh, my favorite part of it and what what did he roll for that charge um he needed because there's also the pylon too like he was barely able to squeeze in but he would have needed, um, like, what? Because he only had four-inch moves, so he needed, like, an eight- or a nine-inch oh, charge. So he fired uh, a catapult at the ten-man chain rest that were at the objective. It was a... So it was Battle for the Pass. Um, I just have a ten-man and a Guardian Soul sitting on my objective, and then he has a objective in the center on the board edge, and then he moves them closer, uh, shoots with the uh, crawler, Kills like eight of my chain rasp, Gosh. and then was able to charge, and then pile in to just barely squeeze in like two guys more than me. But even then, I probably would have ran to battle shock on that. Yeah. Since I don't. But the whole game was just kind of screwy because, uh, so he he gets priority. That's fine. So so he he takes turn one. So he moves everything onto three objectives. Gets five points. I'm like, all right, that's fine. I'll just go for his back objective. So I, I pull out like four units from reserve, and they all fail their charge. And then like, okay, so I just move everything else forward too. They all fail their charge too. So I get one point <laughs> after round one. <laughs> so I'm you're like, already crap. way behind. I'm, I'm so far behind that point. So I'm like, I just have to shove everything into his objective and try and get it. Which you did good, like I said, just watching the because I, I think that's where I came was after that, and you know what I'm saying, and you I mean you were ahead by what f- six four points at the end of yeah. turn five. See, uh, and you end almost of turn three or four. I was up by that twenty. You were almost. But then he was able to get everything after. Yeah, because you were almost. I mean, two turns you almost had his back objective. You were off by like one or two. Yeah. It was it was super like a nail biter the whole game. I just like it. So what did he need to roll? What was the charge number he needed to roll to get to actually hit that charge? Uh, he needed a seven. Oh, that was it. Yeah, that was. It. Oh, that sucks. I thought it was gonna need like a ten or something. Well, he was able to. Uh... Move an extra three, so he he That's did that right, and then because he has that, that got him in range. All right, because I forgot about that ability too, which sucks. Because he gives it, yeah. Then he has a seven inch move instead of a four. Because like I said, I was thinking with a four inch move, yeah, hey, you're gonna need like a 10, 10 inch charge or something like that, something ridiculous. But with that, mm-hmm. yeah, he didn't need much, and then he would have just. Yes. Um. Yeah, and then he, I mean, he has like no way to reroll it too, so it's kind of maybe squeak by with that, but. Yeah, it's it was 50, like exactly 50. what he needed. 
much. Because I was like at seven and a half, and that was like just, or I was like maybe like seven three quarter. So he needed it was something where like he he needed like exactly that and to get within half inch for combat, and that's what he got. So. so. Well, I, like I said, <laughs> I don't think I mean, he had like, any plans, <laughs> and I felt really bad when I left. I just I told told my wife when I got home, I'm like, I'm pretty sure I screwed Bill out of a win, <laughs> a well deserved win with his night haunt. But. Yeah, I don't know. At least the black. I'm just happy that the black coach actually like did something throughout it, and but it did lived. It, did and, it do anything? Yeah, other than live. Um, it it. Focused a lot of because he was like you see this big thing you're like I need to kill that big thing, so he shoved a bunch into it but never so like turn one he fired the crawler into it dealt ten damage to it, Gosh. so I'm like all right I'm left at two, um, heal D three and then try and get it back up to where like I think I got back up to with like um, you rolled a lot taking of like four wounds, yeah, and that in the spirit of torment allowed it to heal a lot too. Yeah. So it's an extra D3 on both battle shock phases. Because um, it it just matters how many you kill in a turn. Mm -hmm. So. But besides that, it was, it was a good game with him at least. Yeah. Well, and I, th I it seemed to me, and I might be wrong, but it seemed to me like you, you didn't get as much value out of your um, spirit host as you probably needed to. It just kind of seemed like they were always on that side of the board. I mean, I know they killed the Cavalos, the 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 cavalry, and I guess probably they what they helped if not killed the. Like, so I guess that's not true. They killed probably the caval. Did they kill the cavalry and they killed the, the stalkers, right? Yeah, it was more that they got, like, locked in combat for like two turns with the stalkers because they just it went with like one wound. Oh. After like even a, a ten inch charge on the black coach with it towards it and it dealt no wounds to it, so I'm like, all right, we're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> now I I heard um, that Night Haunt got some uh, some sub factions in the Bellacore book. Yeah, they got. They got what? Can you hear me? I can now, oh. just barely. Okay, so I, I'm getting a call right now. Oh, you're good. Anyway. So while he's, I think he's taking this call, I just want to chat about um, just point changes. Um, some of the cool things that, uh, kind of like the wins and the losses. Um, Sons of Behemoth, if you play, if you play just uh, Mega Gargants, I think it's a win on the whole because they got the battle line. Um, I, I prefer the War Stomper and Man Crusher Gargants variant, and I think with that, um, we didn't win as I mean, I guess it's not that, yeah. I don't think we won as much. Um, but they're still the same. I mean, now, like I said, you don't even have to, now you don't have to bring Man Crusher Gargants. You can literally just bring um, Mega Gargants, because they're all battle line, which is. Which is a cool thing, and like I said, a lot of I think a lot of people are going to be doing that. You bring your four. I don't even know if you. Yeah, if you bring a war stomper, you can bring a war two a war stomper, a war stomper, two gate breakers, and a kraken eater, is what you can bring. Um, if because everyone wants those gate breakers for some reason, I don't see the value of them. I'm going to have to watch other people. Um, but uh, I don't see the value in it, but other people do. Um, so, like I said, so Sons of Bahamut, and these are, like, again, these are the armies that I play. Um, and so, sorry, just checking. 
Um, so Sons of Bahamut got did really good. Kragnos is now six ninety five, which is a fantastic. You can bring him in a fifteen hundred point army. Uh, I will be playing him a ton in Age of Sigmar three point oh. Um, I will probably be bringing him in a Gargan list for sure. Um, I feel like the Gloom Spike gets are fun. Are you back? Okay, sorry about that. Oh, uh, what, were you, what were you saying? <laughs> uh, I was just I was just talking about winners and losers of um, of the points change. So I just thought, I just kind of was going down destruction. Uh, and basically just the armies that I play and just kind of <laughs> ideas of the others. Just talking about how uh, Mega Gargants are all battle line now. So like you could bring two Gate Breakers, a Kraken Eater, and a War Stomper for you know 2,000 points and that's four battle line units. You don't yeah, have and to bring four Mega Gargants. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to bring Man Crushers anymore. Which, I like I said, I think a lot of people that they're excited about that. I, I'm, I love the Man Crushers. I love the War Stomper yelling at my Man Crushers. So I like that as that as you know aspect, but I will probably break down and get someday, like way down the line, I'll probably get another gate breaker. <laughs> people love. Isn't the, that the isn't that the breakers. most expensive one now? He is, but but people are talking about bringing people are talking about bringing three gate breakers and one man crusher gargan, just so you can have three gate breakers. And I'm like, I don't get it. So I I I gotta like research online and figure out why people like the gatebreaker. I think it's mainly just the volume of attacks. He doesn't have any like, attacks. It has ten attacks, I think, base. He has eight. And it doesn't oh it's eight. And it doesn't I don't think it goes down. It does. As well. His big attack really all of their big attacks go down. His thing is that he hits on fours on that big attack. But it's like minus three rend and it's it's, all, it's like four him. damage a piece or something like that. I just my yeah, thing is like you got to hit with him uh, first, and I could never hit with him. Mm -hmm. And I well, now you have plus damage. one hit, so that helps a whole lot too. Yes, but it's more than reroll ones. Yes, so now he's hitting on threes, which is actually pretty big for him. Yeah, so he's uh, ten attacks, three inch range, fours, threes, minus three, three damage. Three this damage. is profile for that. Yeah. And it's not dependent on the a unit size too, like with like the war stomper, I believe. Well, is but how the, it is. But the war, yeah. So the but the war stomper. One of the cool rules for him that I found out when I was rereading it is if you're fighting a monster, you get a plus, you get plus four anyway. So it's the number okay. of models within three inches, plus your modifier, which is, goes from four down to one, I think, or zero even. And then, mm -hmm. if there's any mon, and it's for each monster, for every monster around you, you get a plus four to your attacks up to ten. But it, I mean, it's not mm -hmm. as strong. It's not. It, it is a. It's the club's not made for. I mean, I guess it does two damage. It's minus two ram. That's three, uh, two minus damage. three, and then three damage for the. Yeah. Or, are you talking about the war stomper? Yeah. Okay. I think his is just a minus two. But. Mm -hmm. The Kraken Eater has some really good tech that I found out the other day, too, because I was, again, I'm trying to figure out how to play against an Archeon. I've never played against an Archeon before. <laughs> uh, and he has a, a, a trait that's a minus one to hit. Mm -hmm. And then he has the, his sandals, which, so how I would kid him to help fight Archeon is you, you take the minus one to hit and then the sandals, which give you an extra attack, so you have four stomp attacks. Maybe it's three. Three stomp attacks at three rand instead of two, and three damage instead of d3. Mm -hmm. So, Can they even be Slayer of Kinged with the... Because uh, they have a rule that they if they were to die from an ability, they, they, take, they just take d6, right? Yeah. Any of, it says any spell or ability that would kill them doesn't. Okay. So. Oh, well, there goes that dream of seeing that happen then. No. I, oh, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was just a spell or not. Well, and like Kragnos, I realized Kragnos, it's, he doesn't have anything like that. And so he could technically be... Yeah, Hand of Dusted or anything like that. Yeah. Well, Hand of Dusted, I'm not so worried about spells. I'm just worried mm -hmm. about like that ability, like an Archeon ability where it's like 
your insta kill. Just kills it outright, yeah. Yeah, or a, like a Larial, a Larial has one, and a few other like Slanesh has one or something like that. Which those are much mm -hmm. more rare. I guess Archeons is 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 was still somewhat rare because you know you're typically only wounding with two or three, but uh, still more likely. Yeah. Because you have to get two. You have to get two sixes, sixes to, wound. to wound. Yeah. And he's got like four attacks base, which uh, you yeah, can I buff up. It's he can buff up the number of attacks. Yeah, if you go uh, well, kind of you can go. Um, uh, Swanesh, uh, Mark. Uh -huh. And then every six is an extra hit. Oh, gosh. So you can do that. So if you roll high, you can maybe so get, get six. some sixes, and then you get more <laughs> hits, and then you are you have more chance to roll two sixes. Yeah. yeah. And then you're handed a dust. Which, that's like the spiky way to go it to do it. You're probably better off going corn, because it just gives you plus one to hit, I think. And, and I think we roll to hit. On... Well, he hits on twos, doesn't he? He hits on twos, wounds on threes, or something like that. Mm -hmm. With that. Maybe I haven't looked at his profile in a bit. A lot of a lot of his stuff is hit on twos. For his weapon, like his attacks, it's hit on twos. And that's why I was like, man, I've got to like I would take a Kraken Eater with minus one to hit to help like it's like, no, you're not hitting on twos anymore. You're hitting on threes. Let's tone it down a little bit as much as possible. But, yeah, him and his mount have twos, the tail is fours, and the three heads are threes, threes. to hit. Yeah. And then threes to wound across the board and then Minus two rend mm -hmm. for most of them. <laughs> I, I was even thinking of taking a a, a shooty, my shooty um, <laughs> Stormcast Eternals list because <laughs> they everything all my like my big shooty stuff has minus two rend mm -hmm. and literally just pinging him to death would be my goal. Yeah, just like okay, you got to see. Let's see how many five ups you can make. Mm -hmm. I don't think he has anything for protection against that. No, he no. doesn't have any any normal wound mitiga mitigation. Just a mortal wound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a mortal wound on a on a five up, on a four up. Yeah. Which the, I mean, I don't think those the long strikes, right? I don't think they have mortal wounds, do they? They do if you if you're to wound as a six or something like that. It's a wound or a if it's a to wound or a to hit. The long strikes to a mortal wound, or like two mortal wounds. Okay. But I'm not looking to do the mortals. I'm just looking for you to. I'm looking for me to do, you know, for you to have to make up, you know, roll five ups. It's like, okay, you know, I shoot four shots, hitting on twos. I hit with three. I roll, you know, three three dice for my ballistas, right? Because I'll take four of them. <laughs> so I, you know, what I'm saying, and I'm so that's nine or ten hits. You're rolling, God. so now you're rolling 10, 10 five ups, and then I have six shots with my storm strike with my long strikes, uh, hitting on twos. So I hit with you know five of them, um, <laughs> wounding. You know I wound with three, f three or four. Let's say four, uh, or even three, and then those are you know what I'm saying. So you're five ups. So that would be you'd save roughly you'd save three or four. Let's say four of my normal ballistas. So I would do roughly five da five or I do six damage with my ballistas, and I would do you would save one of the three for my strikers. So that's another four. So I do ten damage in a in a shot, single shooting phase. Plus, obviously, mm -hmm. I'd shoot my other ballista in the in the. And this is at thirty six inch range. This is me across the board, touching you. Yeah. So. Which I'm not sure. What is the last mission? I can't remember. So the one that we will we'll be playing is the um, oh scorched earth. Scorched earth. But I what I what I would bring is is a bunch of um, MSU um, liberators and um, sequiturs and deep strike mm -hmm. them. I just deep strike okay. them on places that he he's like away from him. They're, like their mm -hmm. their job is to claim objectives, not to fight. And mm -hmm. so it's like, and then I would, you know, any, any of his objectives that he leaves open, I jump into and I burn immediately. And then mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, your goal is to get across the table and kill me, which is fine. But like I said, if I can kill Archeon, then 
That's if. <laughs> well, but that's what I'm saying. Still Archeon. Like, that's that's at 36 inch range, dude. Like uh-huh. if he's if he's if he because I was doing I was rolling and doing math. If you know, so if I get first turn, you know, I'm going to do you know anywhere from typically eight to ten wounds my first turn, mm-hmm. and then he's got to move across the table, and there's no way he's going to get a turn one first turn charge unless he's got something that can teleport him and then also, you know, give him a better charge than a nine inch. You know what I'm saying? And even then I'm going to have a screen for my shooty. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's not like he's going to get into combat with specifically my, uh, my shooting guys. Mm-hmm. Unless he's, again, I mean, he can, um, he can fight twice with the chaos Lord command ability. Yes. But so like you can said, clear your screen, pile in three, kill your ballistas that are behind it. If if he's, depending if he yeah, oh, and I like I said, I would keep one well enough. My ballistas are going to be sitting far back when I'm playing. Mm-hmm. It's like they're going to be way far back. But like I said, and then, then if I get a if I get a second round of shooting or he goes first, he's halfway across the table. Like then he's he's pretty much dead. I I, I did the math. Like I could pretty much kill him. In one round, turn of shooting. If he's <laughs> if he's within eighteen inches. The okay. Pro- the problem is, is what do I do after that? Because then, <laughs> then I've got tons of ri- the chaos warriors are ridiculous, dude. Yeah, they're. Wait, they're I no think joke. they roll all saves if they're we in roll more than saves 10? on a unit with ten or more models. Yeah, just yeah, we down to four up. <laughs> that's four up. Is really good. Well, well, yeah. So, like I said. Well, but again, like I said, if I get to shoot them, you know, now they're rolling sixes, re-rolling, which is fine. But it'll be interesting. I don't know what list to take. I feel like if I take, if I take a man crusher, or if, I, if I take my man crusher gargant list, he's just gonna table me. Like it's, I don't <laughs> think. Well, see, I, I, well, I, I guess that's not even true. I just don't know how to deal with Archeon. I feel like they. Well, that one's. That one is a really hard, like, Scorched Earth is really hard for Guardians because there's oh, so yeah. many objectives. Because there's eight. Yeah, because if you those, leave you one, I can just go and burn it. Yeah. Even if you capture mine. Exactly. After, it's not like and, a super big deal. Yeah. And he wants to be, that's the other thing too, though. He wants to be in my objective, in you know, on my side of the board, and I want to be on his side of the board, so. Mm-hmm. Both have the same game plan. <laughs> just ABC. ABC, get in there. That's why like I said. That's why I'm saying I don't know. I don't know which way to play. I don't know if I want to list try, tailoring. Try to shoot, Jeez. and he might not even take Archeon. I don't even know that. I don't know that for sure. And that's mm-hmm. and that's the other. That's the other thing. Um, I don't want to be with that guy, and so I, that's why I'll, I'll probably just bring my Man Crusher Gargans like I've been bringing to everyone mm-hmm. with everyone. Because I don't want to be that guy. That's not why I'm playing in the league. I just like the fact that he brings Arch. And maybe he does he like? Is he just a super big Archeon Chaos Warrior fanboy or something? Or um, I think because well, he's still working on painting a bunch of stuff. So I uh-huh. think it was more like he can paint one guy and then have it be like half his army, most of his army, yeah. And then he can just fill out for Chaos Warriors and other random stuff pretty easily. So I think that's the main reason why. Okay. Because he's like, do I paint 20 Chaos Warriors? Or just bring Archeon? And yeah. he's like, I'll, I'll bring Archeon. I just, God. I feel, I feel like... But, see, but I feel like if you're bringing Archeon, you deserve someone to list tailor you. Because like, if, if you don't list tailor... If if I'm not bringing a, you know a, uh, a a super difficult list, then you just get destroyed by him. I don't know. It kind of depends. You can just chaff him up real easily. Like the the time I played him, Black Coach and Spirit Host, he couldn't kill the whole unit of Spirit Host. They just, they just kept, kept bringing more back. back. See, but I don't have yeah. anything that does that. Um, just kill him outright with Kragnos. That's what I was thinking of doing, dude. Yeah, man. Get yes, that 36. That's, I was, that's, that's the other 36 thing I mortal wounds on. <laughs> yeah, charge in and be like, pop. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, I rolled a, a five and a six. You take. 
30. You take 30 mortal, 30 mortal wounds. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's gonna save half of them. Because oh, yeah. he's got the mortal butt, and then you're gonna take I'll a take, third. I'll take six. Oh, I, a, a sixth, yeah. <laughs> or if he rolls real hot. But that's fine. Like, so you've, knock taken you down two 50, you've taken 15 mortal wounds, and I've taken six. Yeah. That's a good trade off. And then just smash him out after. Done. I've only got done a deal. Hit with one thing. And Kragnos does have a high uh, rend. That's the other thing, too. I think, like mm -hmm. I said, I think that's the biggest uh, weakness of his. Is. And that's why I think, like I said, I was looking at my a list, and I was thinking, if I was, I was thinking of bringing Kragnos, a Kraken Eater, and a unit of three Man Crusher Gargants, and that would be my seventeen fifty. And it's like, all right, like let's play, let's have fun. <laughs> my five big dudes against your Archeon and small Chaos Warriors. Bunches and bunches of Chaos Warriors, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, yeah, I, that is that that is literally one of the things I thought of was like the, how how amazing would that be to see Kragnos versus yeah. Archeon on the table? Just just don't get charged first. Yeah, I've got to be the one to charge. <laughs> if I get charged by him, I'm in trouble. Yeah, and hopefully no, like you know, double six on the wound. Oh, it is. So what your it king's is. him. It you know, it is what it is. It's like <laughs> it is whatever. All right. So are you done with round three of the league? That was your round three. Uh, yeah, that was my round three of Escalation Week. Okay. So. Just got one more. <laughs> yeah, and we've had like a few people drop, so I I don't think we'd be fighting any repeats. But no, like I'll it might be it might be yeah. like me and Kyler at two thousand. I think is what'll end up happening. It's either you and I've... me or um, me and Jesse Fox. The only two. Yes. You, you are the only two I haven't played. Okay. Oh yeah, I guess that's true. I, I could be against Jesse as well. I haven't played him. But, so I guess there's still a few other options for it, but yeah. yeah. So we'll have to see what happens. I'm excited because we got another week till pairings. Yeah. And how does how does the extra games work again? I don't. I know you told um, me. But... So each week you can play up to two extra games. It's the same mission that we're playing, uh, uh -huh. Be Scorch Earth. Um, it's it's not really dependent. You can bring stuff that's not painted, whatever. It doesn't matter for this one for points for it. Okay. Um, what matters is that if you win or lose. Um, I think if you lose, you get one point. A draw is two points. And then okay. if you win is three, I believe, is how he's doing it. Oh, so, um, so you, you do get more points by playing more and winning more. Yeah, um, I think you can get maximum each week. If you win, like, major victory, win all your other two games, um, you can get a maximum of 17 per two weeks. Okay. Um, you, you just can't play against the same people for the yeah. extra. It has to be someone you haven't played, right? Yeah, uh, they could have been your main opponent prior. Um, like, oh. I could play, uh, like, let's, say, let's see... So you could have played I, I, like my, David Cox, or you could have played. Some. Yeah, or I could I could play Trevor for the next one on like two K for an extra game, for example. That's why I played just earlier, not long ago. Yeah, there's this. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, I didn't. So that's I, didn't how that that. I thought it was like you had to play only the other people. Like um, people it does, you haven't it, played before. Um, it kind of works like that. But it's, it's just if you've played an extra game with them or not is really what it comes down to. Is there a lot of guys that have been playing extra games? Um, not really. It's usually you have to like ask around first if people want to. Um, you know, people are usually busy with life or whatever is going on. So. Oh yeah, and I see, and I haven't seen anybody on like the actual posts really ask for a second mm -hmm. game. So I just didn't know if it was maybe back channels or. I think you better to like just direct message message people. It seems. Yeah. Uh, I remember I, I did a 40k one a while ago, and that's that worked the best for me at least. To get a game. Yeah, to get an extra game with someone. I was doing that. Makes sense. Okay. But. So real quick, winners and losers for points, because we're almost we've hit pretty much an hour. Um, um, I don't want to get it in, so winners and losers for points 
What's the faction that you think did the best? Did the best? Like, made it out alive. I think... Let's see. Daughters of Cain is still set up pretty well. With Marathi being super <clears throat> cheap still. Yeah, Marathi being cheap. Um, you'd never really, like... I think at most you ran two big blobs if you were running a horde style of witch elves anyway. Or sisters yeah. of slaughter. I can't remember the other name it's, for them. Yeah, they don't play sisters. Um, they have, the sisters can have some cool things because they can pile in six. So they can't start out of combat and then come back in. Mm -hmm. um, probably the one that got absolutely dumpstered is Slanesh. I was like, going to say, besides Slanesh. <laughs> besides oh. Slanesh. <laughs> They're oh, unplayable. Man. They were unplayable when their battle tomb came out. They are even more unplayable now. Yeah, you're you're left with some cool looking models at this point. That's all you have. Like, not like, even a, worth taking to the table. Like, Keeper Secrets went up like 70 points or something ridiculous. It's at 420. Yeah. And it was point. already garbage at like three forty or something like that. Yeah, it was already garbage like, at three forty. Like you ran two keepers and kept them close to each other to use their command ability on each other because they can't target themselves. Yeah, so they could get an extra fight. But I would never run two keepers anyway at the at four twenty. Like eight hundred and forty points, like. Pretty close to half your army and two models that it aren't very durable is they can't pretty garbage. Two, two, those two couldn't even take like Archeon could take both of those easily, like not even not even bad an eye. Yeah, like they just don't have any defense. Like they're all offense, obviously, with, but their profile doesn't show it. No, your only real bite is that you can fight twice. Yeah, I think. Uh, so so besides Slanesh, who else got dumpstered on? Um, try to think on the top of my head. In a way, horror armies like Night Night Hunt, not as bad as Slanesh. They're maybe like kind of getting there. If you ran big bobs and hordes of like forty man chain rest, you can only run thirties now. And then they went up so fifteen much points. To do demolish. Yeah, like need, three man is pretty. Extra ten man. Yeah, like uh, charging in a forty man, you can usually have maybe ten survive. Um, and then you can then revive them up to a decent size, and that's not no longer an option now. And in the article they've been doing, they've been going through all the factions. Um, no mention of all-out attack. I mean, all-out defense. Oh, yeah, because you can't so, use it. So I think yeah, you guys kind of got boned on that one. So I'm pretty sure um, that there's going to be no update for Ethereal. It's going to be exactly the same. <laughs> so it's a it's a slow grind until you get to a new <laughs> battle tomb? You're just waiting for a new battle tomb and praying? Yeah. Because I, I was like, maybe they'll mention something. Like, they have to. There's no way they couldn't. Nope. But, like, every other article you, like, I, I don't even read it. I just skim through it and see what rules they show. And it's yeah. the same thing in every single one. But I noticed in this one, all that defense isn't even there. Not even there. Because they can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bro. That's messed up. Um, yeah. For, for me, I think uh, the people that got dumpstered on... It's a toss-up between Lumineth and uh, Zeech. Zeech mm -hmm. because they lost their War Scroll Battalion, um, which was the only way anyone ever played Zeech. So I think a lot of people are going to be like, oh, like, so what, like, I guess we can still play kind of the way we played before, but we're not anywhere near as good. Um, yeah, just not as much rend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And the, with the points increases. That, or like I said, Lumineth Realm Lords, where... You see, and, and I have a hard time even saying they got dumpstered, because I think, like, with all that they do and all their shenanigans, I think they are more closely appropriately pointed. Hmm. 
And I, uh, I think they're still in, I think they're still in a decent spot. I think um, it's a little high, especially some units. But yeah, I think, some specifically like but I think especially. overall, I think you know, they're close. They're closer now. Maybe a little too high, but they're still closer to where they should be than when they were before. Because it's just for all the freaking shenanigans that Techless, yeah. no one will see Techless ever again. So. I think Teclas will still see play. Boards are smaller now, so he can get his spells off, like, uh, Searing White Light better on more units, and more MSU units, too. So I think I think Teclas is just as good as he was prior. Really? Yeah. Because of the MSU way of playing now? Yeah, because it, it targets every unit within six or whatever. You pick a point, and then it goes around that. Um, and then his other spells, like he can heal himself as well, and heal on now with a uh, D three from one of the spells there, which isn't much, but it can be a possible uh, two D three now. Hmm. Interesting. Which I mean, he's not super defensive. Yeah. But because he has a five up save, which is kind of kind of bad for being a god. <laughs> yes. But he has ways to help protect himself. Interesting. And then for I think for the people that won, I saw Blight the Blight Kings gained a lot. Like they actually a lot of their stuff went down in points. Though I know they're mm -hmm. losing some like a lot of different things with the new edition. But uh, I think with uh, Archeon only going up thirty points. And them still having a lot of heroes, like chaos. All the chaos lords went down. Um, some other, I you know, Bellacor went down. Gorby's chariots went down. Though no one really uses those. Um, you know, what I'm saying a lot of like the leaders went down in points, mm -hmm. uh, and the, their their main guys went up. Now I know like the chaos marauders went up, and people are debating on whether or not. And their min size went down, so the the marauders went down to ten instead of twenty. Um, yeah, I don't but, think you'll be running warriors at all. I'm not warriors, um, marauders. Because warriors are just so much better. Mm -hmm. um, like, if you do run marauders, you run them... I, I, I think they get a bonus for more in their unit. Um, I can't remember if it's 20 or 30. I think it's 20. It's, it's 20? You start at 20 is when you get that bonus. Ah... Uh, yeah, it's not like you might see it every now and then, um, but one one wound out to the unit and then they're down in their effectiveness. Mm -hmm. They're down or add one to hit. This unit has at least ten or more models. It just improve the rent if they have more than twenty. But I have at least twenty. Okay. Yeah. So like I said, and that's you know even to get them up to the thirty. So now you're only ever going to be able to get them up to thirty, and you know what I'm saying? And that requires two reinforcements points, which those are very precious nowadays. So, like I said, the yeah. battle, their Chaos Wars didn't go up too much. Their um, Chaos Knights only went up 10. Like I said, they, their, their main stable of things, War Shrines, only went up 15. The, 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 the stable of what they use in and out, other than Marauders, um, is fairly pointed. So I think Slaves of Darkness are. I think they. They not necessarily like they're in a, like they got a, a way way better because they still are what they are, but I think they like they got they missed the nerf bat. <laughs> yeah, they they were on the, the you know the, the outside getting blood splattered all over them instead of actually getting conked on the head. So, mm -hmm. I mean the marauders are still a good just chaff unit. Like, oh yeah, ten man unit just to charge into a hero or anything small like that, like a five one hero to like probably kill if you're. Depending on your charge too, because they can go pretty far. Um, so I think they're still in a decent spot, but you're not going to see these like. I don't think you'll the see big, thirty mans often. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to see those big old, two big old units of marauders like they used to. Mm -hmm. Anyway, well, there you have it. Uh, thank you, thank you for taking the time. I appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. I always love talking about forty k or Age of Sigmar. 
40k. Sorry. <laughs> I, I was going to say games or Warhammer, but then it came out. I was going to come out Warhammer 40k. So uh, Age of Sigmar. Um, I get stuff, some stuff um, this week. So if you have time and want to come over to look at things, um, <laughs> let me know. Okay. I'll let you know yeah. about that. You yeah. might have time this weekend. We'll have to see. Okay. If the stars align or not. All right, right on. Right on. <laughs> Dallin, Dallin's uh, kind of on house arrest now, after his two tournaments. Are you? So are you going oh. to that tournament in in July? Did you sign uh, up for the, that? That one is the um. I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's the charity event, right? No, the charity event's in August. Oh, August. You, um, the one in July. Yeah, the one that's next month. Yeah, I'm going to that one. I've signed up for it. But you're not going to the charity one. I probably won't be able to go to the charity one. Yeah. Okay. Because I am go. I'm not going to the July one. I'm going to the charity one in August. Signed up for that. Okay. One, so. Anyway, so I mean, you don't I, have to tell me how it goes. Yeah, I'll, maybe I'll be able to get the okay to go. It's dependent don't, on some higher don't, power there. Don't don't ask for that. <laughs> ask for the one for in September. There's an Age of Sigmar tournament in September. Is it? Okay. So don't waste it on the uh, the August one. <laughs> Save up your chips and cash in for the September Age of Sigmar event. Because that's where it's at. Okay, that's probably what I'm going to do. And then I'll... Yeah, I mean, 40k is okay. But if I had the choice, I'd rather do AOS events for sure. Yes, and I'm I'm super interested because I want to see how it goes, and then I, so I can get a better idea of like how to make maybe make that happen more. Because I I was chatting with Riley, and he was saying he wants to have a tournament like an, a 40k tournament and then an Age of Sigmar tournament somewhat regularly. Mm-hmm. Which I'm like, yeah, like because Alpha Strike Alliance will help with uh, the 40k tournament here mm-hmm. in Willa, the RTTs, the 20 mans and stuff. But it's the yeah. Uh, it's Age of Sigmar that's going to need help. So, Yeah, well, there's a not as many people that play it. I do know um, Riley's ordered uh, tables. Uh, they're the 60 by 44. Like uh, what tables? Um, just like more, uh, the table size is different. He always orders some like specific foldable ones that are the right size now for the minimum size. He ordered like the like boards or like mats. Um, I think just the table itself. He, I don't think he, I don't know if he's ordered mats. I haven't asked him about that because he, he he can always just cut his own mats shorter or whatever. Yeah. But I know he's done that, and I think he's ordered maybe ten. So that's enough for you know twenty man events. So I guess I'm confused. Like, I mean, terrains worth a turn of the. Table? Uh, so he's ordered instead of like a six by four table, uh huh, um, just the just the table itself. He's ordered sixty inch by forty four inch tables. You can order sixty inch by forty four inch tables. Yes, I didn't know you could either. That's crazy. Um, they're and they fold up really small, like they're really compact. You can fit them in a small closet. Uh huh. So that I, I think he had to order them in the UK though. I think it's the only place that they would make them. Oh, that's funny. So he's got those coming in the next, I don't know, month or two, whenever, however long it takes on that boat. Well, there you go. That's that's awesome. Like I said, I and I, he told me, he's like, yeah, I'm looking to do this regularly. So I'm like, well, that's cool. He wants to do like a league and a tur- you know, and then a tournament and then like a league and then a tournament. And so. Mm-hmm. so we'll have yeah. to wait, wait and see. This should be fun once they'll start kicking off more or not. Oh, yeah. Except I've already had a blast with the league, so. Mm-hmm. Anyway, anyway, it's 820. I've kept you long enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, have fun with the wife and the kid. Um, enjoy your <laughs> repainting of an army. <laughs> I'm already dreading it. I'm like five suits in right now, and then just looking at what I want to do now, but I'll probably stop for the night. The the, the only the only thing more painful than repainting an army is rebasing an army. I feel like Ugh. I I hate rebasing, especially crappy bases. 
mm-hmm. or like used eBay bases and it's just like garbage and you're uh, like, gosh, like what did you do? Like, do you realize what you're making me have to do to fix this? So it's like half their foot is melted from the plastic glue they use. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And like nothing like something breaks off and it never fits back properly ever again. And you're like, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. So I've got a ton of rebasing to do. I'm not looking forward to it, but uh, it it will be what it will be. So Yeah, it is what it is. All right, my man. All right. I, I appreciate your time. You take care. Uh, and we will check you next time. All right. See you later. Thanks, Bill. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. So that was Bill, my buddy Bill, uh, with Codex Hammer. Thanks for watching episode four, chatting about the, the points changes, uh, different things we have going. Um, don't forget, um, uh, Tabletop Miniatures, we are a painting and commission stu- uh, studio. We, we can help you get your tables tabletop your miniatures tabletop ready excuse me uh if you're interested contact us at tabletop miniatures at gmail.com uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you're watching on youtube um and follow us on facebook and hit the like button on facebook uh thank you thank you thank you for watching and we'll see you guys next time <laughs>